Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections, and today I've got a product review of the TopTest PT205 gas leak detector. So before I get into this, I want to have a benchmark that I'm comparing this device to. Here at Structure Tech, we've used a combustible gas detector forever to find gas leaks. That's what this guy is. This is a TIF 8900. This is my benchmark. Important term distinction though. This is a combustible gas detector. This will detect gas leaks. It'll detect exhaust gas leaks. That means exhaust gas leaking out of say the jacket of a boiler or leaking out the front of a gas fireplace. It'll detect all kinds of stuff. Bad breath even, maybe. But the PT205, this is only a combustible leak detector, a gas leak detector. That's all it does. So it's, it's much more limited in what it will identify. However, it's priced appropriately too. This thing retails for a little more than 25 bucks on Amazon while the TIFF 8900 is over 10 times that. So I can buy a whole fleet of these little guys for the same price as one of the TIFF 8900. So it's in a whole different price category. It's in a different size category too though. I mean, look at this. Isn't this cute? This is the size of a voltage detector or voltage sniffer. I call this thing a gas sniffer. Why not? It's it's, it's bigger than a pen, it's the size of several pens, but the cool thing is that it's small enough to where a home inspector could slip it into their tool pouch and they can carry it around with them during the entire inspection. You suspect a gas leak, you can take this out and you can check it pretty quickly. Now, I'll be honest, I usually use my nose and whatever we're gonna find with our gas leak detectors or our combustible gas detectors, we never report on what these devices find in our reports. The only way we report on a gas leak is by using soap bubbles. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about that in next week's video. We're gonna come back to that. I think this is a very important topic, but I don't wanna get too sidetracked. Getting back to this guy, I'm, I'm doing a product review here. Something beautiful about this is the warm up cycle. The way it warms up is you press the power button you wait 30 seconds, it's got a countdown timer on here, we're at 26, 25. After 30 seconds, it's good to go. On the other hand, for the TIFF 8900 to get this thing to warm up, now it's already warmed up, kind of. It's, it's kind of like a, a small engine. Once it's warmed up, it's kind of warmed up. Um, you, you, you flip this thing on, you turn it on. When it's cold, it's gonna take about 45 seconds before it starts ticking. This is warm. I've been playing with it. There's my other one. My other one's ready to go. I've been playing with it, so it started ticking pretty quickly. And then once it does start ticking, I gotta adjust the sensitivity up, 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 keep going up till it ticks faster. And then I dial it back until the tick speed has just slightly increased. That's the sensitivity level I want. But all of that takes time. It takes maybe about a minute to get this thing warmed up when it's completely cold. Tap test, there's no messing around, you just turn it on, you wait 30 seconds, and then it's good to start detecting gas leaks. It does have two modes on here for sensitivity. It has both a high and a low sensitivity mode. You probably can't see the screen here, but uh, one press of a button and it switches between sensitivity modes. I don't know why I would ever want to use the low sensitivity mode. Um, maybe someone much smarter than me could explain that one. We always keep it on high sensitivity. And then batteries. This is a very important distinction here between this one and the, and the TIFF 8900. The top test uses a pair of AAA batteries. Everybody has those. They're, they're a piece of cake to replace. The TIFF 8900, on the other hand, uses a pair of proprietary nickel cadmium batteries that are impossible to find. It's uh, these little guys, they're impossible to find and they are hideously expensive. They're super overpriced because you can't get them anywhere. And who uses nickel cadmium anymore? This is some old technology, but that's what it uses. I don't like that. You gotta keep them charged. 
A lot of inspectors on my team complain about this and oh, the battery's always dead when I want to use it and it takes forever to charge. I get it, they're valid complaints. And then also on the, on the TIFF 8900, it's got this replaceable sensor. Maybe I'll just try popping them my out. Yeah, look at that. The sensor pops right out. When they go bad, you got to replace them. With the top tests, I don't think it has anything that's replaceable other than the batteries. If the sensor ever does go on this thing, just throw it away. Get yourself a new one. I don't know, maybe you're not supposed to throw it away. I didn't, yeah, it says you're not supposed to throw it away. But dispose of it properly and get yourself another one. For 25 bucks, this is a very disposable tool. Okay, so that's all I can think of when it comes to price and size and shape and all that stuff. But now the important part, the proof is in the pudding. Does it work? Will it find gas leaks? That's what we really wanna know. That's, that's all that really matters. Does it do its job? The answer is yes. I went to my gas range and I turned it on the lowest setting, just the tiniest bit of gas coming out. Now, to put that into perspective, during a home inspection, if I found a gas leak that big, I'd call that a pretty serious gas leak. I might even shut off the gas flow into the appliance and I might call the gas company if I found that big of a gas leak. That's pretty big. But uh, I created it for this test and I held both of the devices up above my burner. And you can see in the video here, they sounded off at the same time. Bottom line is big gas leak, they'll both find it quickly. For a smaller gas leak, however, for something very, very tiny, I made the smallest gas leak that I could make. I went to the flare nut on the gas line to my water heater. Yes, in Minnesota, we're allowed to use soft copper for gas piping. I know people in other parts of the country are gonna wonder what the heck I'm doing here, but it's standard here in Minnesota. I, I loosened up that, that nut just a little bit. I made the smallest leak that I could, and then I went around it with both gas detectors. Now, with the TIFF 8900, all I had to do was slow down just a hair. You can see this, and it would detect the gas leak. But with the top test, I really had to pause at that gas leak for a second to find it. I mean, you really gotta be moving slowly. So there is a difference in the sensitivity level. The top test needs to sniff that gas for maybe an extra quarter, half second before it registers. So I'm not gonna say they're exactly the same. The, the device that costs 10 times as much is a hair more sensitive, but it's not a huge difference. And the bottom line is, the tool you're gonna use is the tool that you can carry around in your pocket I don't think I'm gonna be buying any more of the TIFF 8900s. I think that you get a lot more value out of the Top Test PT205. I'm a fan of this thing. That's probably what we're gonna start using from now on. All right, that's all I got for you. It's a good little device, well worth the 25, 26 bucks on Amazon. I'm gonna put a link in my video somewhere here. I'll try to figure out how to do that if you're interested in this thing. And then in next week's video, I'm gonna talk about finding gas leaks, what our procedure is as home inspectors and how we document it. All right, again, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections. Thanks for watching. Take care.